The bare beak looms over you as you block the entrance of the cave to cover your friend's escape. He raises his massive spear and attacks. Does a uh, 23 hit? Yeah, then I'm level two with 23 hits. Okay, so that does... Oh, how much health do you have left? I have about four HP left. Uh, how much do you have total? I have 16 total. The attack does 24 damage. Okay, so I'm down. You are dead. Wait, like dead or unconscious? Like dead, dead. As the Verbeeg runs his spear through Tetra's chest, he grins, issuing a guttural laugh that travels to the party who slow their pace, turning to see the horrible display. Does Tetra have any last words? Oh boy. I run gritty but not necessarily brutal games. Like, I can probably fit my player kill count during my whole time playing Dungeons & Dragons on two hands. My players know the fear of having their characters go down, but death in my games is relatively rare. It's not that it doesn't happen, it does, but my players are typically prepared with quick resurrection reagents, so we don't often have to deal with a permanent stop to a storyline. To do that though, you need expensive reagents, which means they need access to money and civilization. In my campaign, both are exceedingly rare. Welcome to Icewind Dale, I guess. There are several towns, but the snowy terrain makes them hard to get to and resource poor. Before my players started down this quest, the warning signs for danger were all over. When they got to town, the previous town leader, a bull of a man, was dead from an encounter with the Verbeek, which is like a smarter, lankier ogre or like a dumber giant. When they searched for it, they found the dead remains of a party of hunters that tried going after it before them. In Session Zero, I warned my players that they might not be strong enough to face every threat they encounter, and running or waiting to face something until they're ready is a valid strategy. Despite all the warning signs, the party plunged into the depths of the monster's lair and found the threat to be too much. Some tried to escape, but the battle seemed to be teetering towards victory, so some of them turned back to continue the fight, but the lack of a cohesive strategy left Tetra out of position. When Tetra fell to the Verbeeg, I honestly didn't know what to do. I knew my player had worked really hard on the character, both in design and backstory. That said, I played fair as a DM with my warning signs. The death was earned, and I didn't see any other option but to roll a new character. But I wasn't sure. So I stopped the game. I said, all right, we're taking a 15 minute break, and I told Maggie to meet me in the other room to chat. I asked her, what do you wanna do? Do you want to roll a new character, or should we find a way to bring Tetra back? I'm going to stop here and address what many of you might be thinking right now, because I'm sure that there are literal battle lines being drawn in the comments as to what the right thing to do in the situation would have been. Some of you might be thinking that in order for there to be stakes, character death must be a real threat, and should be permanent if there are no rules as written ways to bring the character back. To those of you, I say, I sort of agree, with a very important caveat. I value what my players find fun more than that. As for the other side of the argument, some might just hand wave the death and have some god bring her back right away. There really was no rules as written way to bring Gandalf the Grey back as Gandalf the White, but it was awesome. That might be too incongruous with the game I'm running and the character she's playing, but there is a way to compromise between rules of cool and rules as written. Choice and consequence, dramatic weight, and fun. I'll get back to that later. I told Maggie that the situation looked grim for Tetra. They were out in the wilderness, with no nearby resurrection service. There may be no way to bring her back within the bounds of the adventure, but we could find a way to make it work if she wanted to keep her character. So Maggie thought about it and landed on keeping her character. There was more she wanted to explore with this story and the setting and would feel really bummed to leave it all here. So I told her okay. We went back to the game, the players managed to defeat the Verbeek by the skin of their teeth and mourned their fallen companion. The party's paladin had a background tied to a temple in the biggest town in Icewind Dale. They suggested that if they could get Tetra's body there, the Sybil there may be able to bring her back. I told them the journey would be hard, but possible. So they set off. Now here's something I want to bring stark attention to, player downtime. Not character downtime, that would be a different video. The time a player spends not doing anything. When a player's character is dead, there is literally nothing for them to do. Their primary means of interacting with the game of D&D is literally dead in the water, which means they will get bored, frustrated. Even if you bring in a new character, you'll most likely encounter this downtime until you can find a way to introduce them organically. So how do you fix this? 
<laughs> you sweet summer child. Not everything I do is simple and clean. I basically had the player chill while the party made this journey. They were pretty much benched for the back half of this session, and I told them they could just show up for the back half of the next one when the party got to a place that they could bring her back. You see this happening in Critical Role when a, spoilers, certain character dies, they literally don't show up to play for the next session and a half. I thought about fast forwarding to when they could bring her back, but there were two reasons why that was out of the question. Number one, travel is a super important aspect of my game, and the difficulty in getting somewhere and hauling cargo is a part of the challenge. And number two, the dramatic weight of the time a character spends dead and the effort it takes to bring them back adds to the story. Fast forwarding cheapens that. When the players got to the temple, they encountered the paladin's backstory. It turns out they weren't exactly on good terms with the Sybil, who wasn't inclined to do the party any favors. Here's where we get back to narrative consequence. The Sybil agreed to bring Tetra back in exchange for both the gold cost of the spell as well as the paladin agreeing to do a quest for her, basically roping the paladin back into the fold. The paladin agreed, and I ran one of Matthew Mercer's infamous resurrection rituals. If you haven't seen them, basically they're skill challenges, where every success raises or lowers the DC the DM rolls at the end. If the DM's roll beats where the DC ends up, the ritual is successful. Each subsequent resurrection after the first one increases the DC by 5, and a failed roll means that the character can never be brought back to life. So even here, all of your carefully laid plans can come crashing down by the will of the dice. Or you can cheat to get your desired result. Not that I would ever do something like that. <laughs> no way. No. Never. In retrospect, I think there were a few things I would do differently. Namely, the party made the journey with an NPC. I could have transferred control of the NPC to the player for the duration of the trip. That would have given them something to do while their character was on the bench. Death is a part of D&D because the game is all about risk and reward. You spend the majority of the time in game doing extremely dangerous stuff, so thinking about how to handle the inevitable consequences of those actions is important. The key things to take away from this video are number one. If you're unsure how to handle a situation, take a break. Let everyone breathe. It lets the player have a minute. Losing a character is a frustrating business. When they're ready, talk to the player about what they want to do. That's a tactic that will serve you well. When in doubt, talk to your players. Number two, letting a character come back to life outside of rules as written doesn't have to break your game's immersion. Just ensure that it still feels impactful. Maybe there is some sort of consequence, whether that's some resurrection sickness, agreeing to do a quest, or going into debt, the choice is yours. Number three, while the player is dead, see if there's a way for them to stay engaged or just limit the out of game time they're on the bench for by nudging the group onwards. If you have your own way of handling this, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and share with your gaming group. My name is Ben Hart, and remember that death is just another path, one that we all must take. See ya.